So have you guys ever wondered how to make a really cool sports poster? Well, that's what the video is going to be about. I'm going to basically walk through slash tutorials slash whatever this title of the video is. It's going to be like a different kind of series. Hopefully I enjoy it. I'm basically going to take a mood board. I have these four images that I'm going to use for my inspiration. Of course, each image supplying its more specific use case and what I would use the inspiration for. So overall, let's walk through some ideas and uh, let's get this thing going. And also do not forget to check out the everything pack. It's the first link in the description down below if you guys want to purchase it. It's a one-time purchase and you get my custom assets free for the rest of your life no matter what. And it's also custom, so you know it's no one else's hands besides the ones who of course purchased it. So if you guys wanna check it out, I would highly advise you to, but let's now hop into the video. All right, so let's go and hop into this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the composition from this poster here. I enjoy the way it looked. I think I like the flow lines. They, they just make me feel good inside. Uh, I really like the actual typography kind of overlapping text here. I really enjoy the sort of background element here, specifically like this portion right here, where it kind of has like this orange to blue transition and it has this awkward like little break. I think we could do something with that. That's gonna be kind of cool. Um, and then I just really enjoyed the, the type texture here. So I'm gonna probably use all of these references to create a cool poster along with you guys. You guys can learn and you know, I have some cool stuff. And of course I have a bunch of different photos. And if you don't know how to actually get photos that are actually high quality and there's no real secret besides this. So what you wanna do is of course, type in your player or object of toy, uh, choice, toys. God dang it. A lot of people just sort of do this. They'll go to tools, they'll go to size and they'll go to large, right? That's the pretty much like the, the universal, I'm looking for images. Let me make sure I get like higher quality images. But then you click around and you notice only like a one by 0.5K by 2K. This one's like 3K by 1K. What you wanna do is you go to the top right corner. Here it says quick settings. You click into this, you click into advanced search. Then over here, you drop more says image size, go to any size, and then scroll all the way down till you get about eight or 10 megapixels is pretty good. And now any image you click, we got 4K by 3K, we have 3K by 2K, 5K by 3K. You get the idea, right? So if you're looking for high quality images without an advanced search, you're trolling. Just saying. So just for the record, in case you guys wanna know how I cut things out, what I do is I press W on my keyboard. That gives me whatever selection out of my quick selection tools. Then I go up to where it says select subject. Once I've got the selection, I press Q on my keyboard. I go around the edges and just say to myself, does that look good? Okay, around his face looks actually pretty decent. Around his ear though, a little mess up. So I'll take a brush, take my black brush. You see it's black. I can fill it in and it'll fix it. So. That works there. In this case here, I don't want to fill anything in, right? So I'm going to take my brush, make it white, and then I'm going to erase it just like so. And then right here is the inside of it, you know, kind of like in a hole, right? So I'm going to take this, fill this hole back in, and this works for me. Now that's how I cut things out. I press Q again, click on the image itself, and click layer mask. And now we're, we're pretty set. And now all I want to do right now is just kind of make sure I get like a small, a medium, and very obvious large look. Because obviously, if I were to put these all the same kind of ratio, you're gonna get more of like a collage idea and I want more of like that heroic kind of stance idea. So I'm gonna go make sure I kind of get a small, medium, and large. I've got these nice flow lines. But the thing is, I did have to flip this image for it to kind of work. Cause otherwise if it was like this, it just, it didn't, it didn't feel, it felt like everything was leaning towards this way. Cause all the flow lines in will be like this. We got this, we got this, we got this. It just doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna flip it. So la I, la we're gonna have to fix this. I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna make a duplicate, rasterize, take the actual overall patch itself, copy. We're gonna select the actual copy, go back to the layer, press M on our keyboard. Then we're gonna do content aware fill and it's gonna fill just around this part right here. Press okay. Now it's gone. Now we put the patch back. Now we flip the patch and then we go like this. Hold up. Perspect distort. This is where you speed it up. Obviously, we're gonna take some of these edges though. Right, we're gonna fix this. We're gonna kind of erase around. This works. Like first glance, no one's gonna zoom in and care about it, right? We just wanna make sure there's not an obvious letters and an obvious like eyesore. We're gonna have to fix this one too, actually. The issue with this that's immediately kind of popping out is that we need to make sure we color correct as much as possible. So I think this photo is probably the best color correction of his skin tone and the highlights and such. But this one over here is very obviously blue. This is more purple. So we're gonna have to get in here, go on a camera raw filter. And unfortunately, camera off filter, you cannot see your original picture, which is Photoshop. Get on that. I think the first thing I'm gonna try is to actually use a temperature adjustment and see if this quick little adjustment works here. Come back out for a second. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of blue in his beard. So the way I'm gonna actually tackle that is I'm gonna go into where it says color mix, where it says saturation. 
for the blues, the aquas, I'm going to lower this all the way down to negative 100. Blues all the way down to negative 100 as well. Okay, so this is before. You can look at his beard here. This is after, right? We got this nice little switch. There's no more random colors in there. So I think the next step here is to actually make sure we kind of like make them all feel like around the same time with the photo it's taken. So we're actually gonna take some texture and apply it to basically everything. Cause this one already has a lot of texture in my opinion. So we're gonna go back into camera off filter. So with this though, I'm gonna also make sure I kind of take some of these highlights, some of this contrast a little bit maybe and kind of just tweak very small adjustments. We get something more decent, right? So I'm putting the texture up quite a lot, maybe a little bit of clarity, a little quick comparison. And I think that's pretty decent. So I'm gonna go over here, filter, camera roll filter the same thing with this image as well so we're going to do some texture like so pretty decent okay last but not least this is going to be a harder one in my opinion so we're going to take the texture put it up actually probably over a hundred at a hundred just because it is already so soft you can see right here putting that texture up will really help us get a little bit more grain and uh skin grit maybe even a little bit of sharpening so we can make sure we get as much detail as possible without getting these lines here you see this little kind of like uh I, I forgot what it's called but it's the infamous noise texture right you want to basically always put that up until you just find a little bit too much of the texture you press okay you come back out and now we got something pretty decent as you guys can see i, I just caught myself erasing these like fringe lines here because it's like it's like a black line it's very obvious i'm gonna come over here double click on this you select and mask we're gonna come over to where it says radius we're gonna put this up by one pixel right uh and then we're gonna take the smooth put this up by about like seven or so take the shift a uh, edge put this down to like negative negative 10 to something is pretty good so we're gonna go like that and just like that we get a little bit better it could be a little bit more though this is a lot more cleaner it makes the actual overall image look a lot more better as well but i really enjoyed this background idea so the first things first i'm gonna get myself a nice sky image put this nice and just like we're gonna put it there for now it doesn't really matter I kind of, it does matter. I kind of want the blue to be like this. That blue feels really nice. The rest of this backdrop or the bottom half will actually be something a little bit different. So the issue for me is I'm not finding a good enough crypto arena image because the whole point for me was actually have the overall crypto arena itself kind of like show its name here and kind of be like so, but that's not gonna work out. So instead, what I might do is I might use some sort of like grunge asset or like spray to actually uh, to act as a divider, okay? So I have this spray here that might work as a divider. So the rest of this though, I'm gonna make another duplicate, take the black and I'm basically gonna just fill in the entire rest of this. So with this though, what's this gonna act as is a nice little secondary background for us. I'm gonna combine these images together. So I, I can only really find really high quality pictures of this are we gonna like nitpick this one? Can I just do this? I'm just trying to get a little bit of like texture. That's all I want. Cause I'm gonna do it in a second here. It'll, it'll make more sense. So now that we have this, I'm gonna take over here, use a little bit of gradient map, come over here. And I really enjoyed the concept itself had orange in it. And given that this complementary color of yellow, uh, it's gonna work out for us. I'm gonna take a nice little orange. And we're gonna go like this orange, but then like add another orange, but just like very less orange, right? Cause orange to black, you see how the, it just makes it look too noisy. The background itself is a little bit too much that's going on here. It's kind of annoying the hell out of me. So instead I'm gonna take the actual orange itself and basically make it a darker color or even a darker tone. And this is a lot more better and easier and more fun to work with. I think the blue tone is really cool on its own, but it might need to be a little bit more teal for it to make a little bit more sense for this composition. So we're gonna select hue, go to this over here and just make it a little bit more of like this bluish tone like so. It looks good. Does it look a little bit too like Miami-ish though? You know, really vibrant vibes. It's not a bad call and not a bad thing, but it's okay. Right, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna also, I wanna move around the uh, the center a little bit more. I'm just gonna erase it, screw it, and now I can get that nice background texture in there. I also really enjoy though, a little bit more of like the white to come out. So instead, I'm gonna take some of the highlights and the whites on this basic camera filter so I can get more of that color, right? So if I take this, I take this, put this up, come back out of here, I can get a lot more window for myself. I use another orange here with like a light little uh, color dodge, just kind of bring out the background just a tiny bit more. So I'm liking where if I put this uh, LeBron James text out, I, I don't feel as if though it needs to be that big. I almost want to use this as like a type texture thing because you know, the goal for certain posters might be to actually showcase the name player or even a stat or like an MVP portion of it. Whatever your poster's hierarchy is supposed to be, it might make more sense for this to actually align with that. But for my sake, 
I find this more as a poster kind of used to kind of celebrate the person that you might already know. So having a super big old name may not be what it should kind of portray. Maybe even for now, kind of playing with just the overall like grid system here. So I might just put a six here, LeBron James six, and maybe just what I'm missing, I guess is the Laker logo. We can put that in two. It looks pretty good. Like over here would be too much. I think it looks pretty decent over here. And I just realized why am I not using orange, right? Like technically I, or not orange. Why am I not using purple? because technically it might look a little bit better. So I might try out a purple for a second. In this case, maybe I can actually overall, I can actually probably add in the purple logo now, right? Like somewhere cool. I kind of like it floating in this area right here for now. Um, but I also want to see what would happen if I made the dark, like a little bit more darker, just to compliment. Ooh, I love the shade from dark to light here. I really enjoy that. So I'm going to say that's a W that's an accomplishment. Okay. So I feel like we got something pretty decent. Now we're kind of starting to see this all come to play. Um, now it's kind of starting a little bit more time about like, maybe not adding so much extra texture, but more or less sort of adding more of the, the, the real texture. We need to add some glows, all that good stuff. Cause you guys were, called me out in one of my videos last time. Like, where's the glows? Okay, I'll add to the glows, okay? We'll take a nice sort of like color dodge, linear dodge, add color for now. We're gonna take this really nice orange that's deep. We're gonna make it even more deeper by just making it darker. Given the fact that we also have orange in the background here, it's not gonna like pop out as much as I want. So instead of linear dodge add, I'm gonna do color dodge, right? So this orange, that deeper tone orange on top of the same exact color, will just make it pop out just a little bit more. So we have something like this, but we're gonna do something called a rim light that'll help this out as well. So take this, make a new layer, clip mask this new layer onto this. And with this rim light here, the objective here is to take a nice orange tone, choose it to be a little bit more white, right? I'm gonna put the tone more towards the white, even make the color a little bit more lighter as well. Shrink my brush, maybe make it around like a 30% hardness and just come right along the edge, right? Now we're gonna be like a little bit uh, not realistic here, but we're gonna make it look good. Right, so there's one of those issues where we're like, so, so where's your like uh, light source? Man, everywhere. Come over here and just get as close as possible. You don't wanna go like this, right? That's not the image. We wanna make sure we kinda put our brush way further out and use very much so like the overall tip of the brush to kinda give ourselves a nice little rim light. So I wanna go over here, make a new layer, clip mask that, come back over here and just kinda do a nice little highlight on linear dodge add. And this is what's gonna actually make this feel like an actual glow. So now the yellow feels a lot more like a yellow kind of highlights rather than a yellow, just random color on his face. But I need to erase that just a little bit on this side here cause it didn't make too much sense to go around his head like that. And that looks pretty decent. Now, if you want to, I can do it once more. And this time I'll lower the opacity a little bit to like maybe like 40 or 30% even. Go back to linear dodge add and just go over it one more time and give the overall graphic a pretty heavy glow. And now I gotta do that all the way around. Let's insert the speed art. So if I just kind of click around, we're gonna add a little bit of glows in some of the spots that just kind of feel like it's missing. Now, to be honest with you, I'm not also completely sold on my type choice just yet, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of wanted like explore something a little more like, something like that can be kind of cool. Just like a little like texture uh, texturized with the uh, overall graphics itself. Like six can be like that tone as well. I'm gonna do something for a second, okay? Follow me, all right? We're gonna go over here to filter. We're gonna go over here to where it says, actually not filter, we're gonna do color range. And we're gonna select a part where it's highlighted on the overall shoulder, something like this. Make sure I get just enough so we get a little bit of their face being highlighted in certain areas and press okay. Now with this, I'm gonna take over here and I'm gonna use a, a levels. We're gonna use levels. I can put this above all of my images because it'll, it'll basically do all the highlights in the entire photo itself. If I just move this up, right, you'll see every highlights in this entire thing will actually end up changing as well. So we can basically exaggerate the highlights and the shadows, which I'm gonna do in a second here and make it look pretty cool. I'm gonna basically bring this middle piece towards the left bring this farthest right piece and maybe a little bit towards the left as well, but not too much. But if I kind of turn it on and off, we can see it just kind of pulling out a little bit more, which is just makes it look a little more like uh, even higher quality even. But now that we've done highlights, we're gonna go back into select, back into color range and go into the shadows. So the shadows would be something like, maybe like the armpit area. No, maybe like the face area like so. 
We're going to lower the fuzziness down quite a lot. Come back over to levels again and take this this time and drag it a little bit further down. Now, of course, in certain areas, you're not going to want it. That's OK. Take that brush and just basically erase around where you don't want it for sure. You can see it adds a little bit more clarity to the actual overall image without over, like messing with the image quality, which is a very cool thing to do. So do I want to add like a very cool suggestive text that says go in the background, whether you believe it or not, and kind of like add in a little bit of texture this way. I'm not sure because there's something about it that makes this part up here, this far left part feel incredibly empty, but I absolutely could cheat the system and just click everything and just select it and make it way larger or just move it all towards the left hand side. Cause this, this kind of does feel a little towards like the far right. Don't know what I was thinking there, but I think this feels better. Now, I can't lie though. I am a tight texture person and I'm just, I'm, I need something. If I wanna put like Lakers, you know, or Los Angeles Lakers and sort of add this font on the far right here and even change the name of LeBron to the same font as well. Maybe even change the six to the same font as well, just so I can kind of have a little bit of, of consistencies there. But I also kind of enjoy that six there too. But also is the six even like necessary? Cause it's like super floating. I want to say no. I want to take this though, make this a little bit more shorter. You know, number six, or even like we can just put some nicknames, like a King James, something like that. And the overall reason we're putting this text is not for it to be legible, but to act as a supporting texture element on the places that we feel like need it. So that for me, there for sure needs it, but over here, absolutely, we can add in Lakers, you know, 23. But there's a part of me that absolutely cannot get over the fact that there is just something missing that kind of breaks all these flow lines and kind of sits right there. Now, I think that'll make this overall just come out really, really nice. So how am I going to do it? Now, realistically, I think something like this is what I meant by the palm trees. There's something about it that works even as its own color green. Once I add a little bit of a gradient, it just kind of feels a little bit too sporadic and just like too much texture in the background over like supporting element. So something like this might work out if I duplicate it, if I maybe like convert it to a smart object, Throw it into camera raw filter, change the green's tone, something a little bit more unique. It might feel a little bit better, like something a little more orangey tones to it, right? Something like that. We get something like this, which kind of matches the overall warmer tones and vibes, which I think looks better. I can't argue that I do enjoy it without it, but I can't argue that there's my, maybe a version inside of me that wants to use this application and also maybe even use this background. I have too many options. That's the issue for the sake of it all. I might stick with the purple just because it does feel right. It doesn't feel so wrong. Let's combine everything after we're done with control, alt, shift and E to merge it all into one layer. Uh, make sure this is a smart object. Go back into camera I'll filter. Give myself a little nice before and after by clicking on this little button right here. But come over here, maybe some shadows, some whites, some blacks. Maybe even take the color of the jersey and bring it out even more with like the saturation. Maybe a bit of sharpening as well and then end it off with the classic grain. Not adding too much, but just enough grain that looks pretty decent. And I just realized that before I even do that, what I should probably do, I'm going to come back out of this for a second. I'm going to go into all of these guys' eyes. It's like the last final touch. Some people do this in the beginning. I forgot for some reason, but I'm going to take a brush, take a white and basically go over every single part of his eyes to make sure they actually pop out like so. I'm going to just take the eraser, just erase around the corners and edges a little bit so that's not super obvious. But we're going to go in here and white out these eyes and what this will do is that the overall design itself, the eyes will end up being the hierarchy in the photo, while the photos are also still like the hierarchy, the focal point itself. It'll just make the overall graphic little, look a little bit more animated and purposeful on some of these pictures. You can see the eyes get lost here. Now over here, they're very much so out and about, and I would say that's pretty decent there, and I'm gonna do that for all the eyes as well. So now if we turn it on and off, when you look at every single one of these eyes, it looks really decent, and now we got their like the emotions there, right? So now I can take everything, combine it, then apply that same overall color filter raw, and uh, we're done, for real this time. So with that being said, the overall composition itself starts off with, of course, figuring out the actual overall photos and where they belong. Once you kind of got that set, then you want to go ahead and just make sure you apply some of your typographies and elements that are going to be inside the overall graphic to help you kind of balance everything out. That, of course, includes your text as well as your background colors, all that good stuff. Then once you finalize that, you can move on to adding your glows themselves. The glows themselves, of course, play a very heavy part in the overall graphic, but so does the quality 
of the images. So make sure you're getting really high quality images overall. Then pretty much when you're done with the very hard parts, all that comes next is just having a little bit of fun. I could work with this for the next three or four hours. I'm gonna go, I stopped at an hour itself, but I can work with this for like an hour or more and just probably find something completely different, the different color scheme, a different supporting elements. Well, that's a really fun, cool part of these graphics because there's just so much you can do. But with that being said, that is the end of the video here today. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video slash tutorial slash walkthrough slash let's design it, I have no idea what I want to call this series. It's not like a tutorial. It's not really a entertainment video. Like, where is it? I don't know. But if you guys enjoyed it, like it. Of course, that being said, it says so HQ out. We're going to get to keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking productive, guys. Let much love. Peace. And don't forget to check out the everything pack at silphead.com. So HQ or sysohq.com. You're the one. Top link in the description. Peace.